Welcome back. It is the coming of age story of two sisters from Calgary, Alberta, who grew up in the grunge and rave culture of the 90s before becoming celebrated musicians and global LGBTQ plus icons. It's called High School, and it's about to be released in paperback. So singer-songwriters Tegan and Sarah are joining me to talk about their New York Times best-selling memoir. Thank you for joining me, both of you, and how brave of you both to take us back to high school, which is such a tough time in so many people's lives. So who came up with the idea to write about this time? I think it was me. Um, Tegan had definitely talked about writing stories about our childhood and um, and was a little bit more flexible about timeline. And I tend to be a little bit more rigid about our projects. And so I really wanted to sort of give, give us a bit of a boundary. And so high school for us was almost maybe more akin to what people have uh, in college. Like we had all this independence. We started our band. We had some of our first significant uh, relationships uh, and breakups, of course, super important for the artist, songwriter. But uh, for us, high school was very unique in that it wasn't the worst time of our lives. It was actually one of the best times. <laughs> you never know how it's going to roll, right? I, I didn't have mm -hmm. a tough time in high school, although I wouldn't go back because I don't want to feel like that <laughs> insecure person that thinks everyone in the school is watching every move that I'm making and no one cares. <laughs> Um, I want to know what was the experience like uh, for you all going back to these years? Was it fun for you? Was it emotional? How did it feel? I actually really enjoyed it myself. You know, Sarah, um, Sarah and I had gotten off the road and we'd done back-to-back -back records and we were really looking for a creative project that would let us stay home for a while. You know, we tour a lot. And so for me, you know, the material itself was really fun to write. It was really great to connect with some of our friends from high school that we hadn't spoken to, but we have a pretty close knit group of girls we still hang out with um, from high school. And it was, it was really fun to go down memory lane and it was fun to um, read all the notes and stories. We had tons of video footage. We found all of our old demos uh, from our first band in high school. So for, for me, it was actually a really fun um, uh experience and journey but I, I, can't, I, have the, I can't I can't unravel it from being just off the road it was just nice to be home and sleeping in my own bed too so I think I was just like living my best life I would wake up every morning and be like I'm a writer I'm a writer I was gonna say I have the therapy bills to prove that I had a more challenging it was harder experience. yeah it was <laughs> it is kind of nice to be able to uh to stay home and be a writer that seems that's a that's a dream for me so the book alternates in chapters uh from sarah's point of view then tegan's point of view it makes sense to me uh but why did you decide to tell your story in this manner and and was it difficult to relive any of those experiences at all you know one of the most significant overlaps i guess you could say from the way that we write music to writing this book is that it's so important that as individuals, we have the space to use our own voices. You know, even when we're writing music, by the time the average listener is hearing it, there's a lot of collaboration that has happened. And so sometimes it can even be difficult to tell which one of us is singing or who wrote what song. But for the book, it was really significant to us that Tegan be able to tell the story of her time in high school from her perspective. And same for me. And so, and so much of what made this book, I think, really fascinating for us to write, but also for the reader um, to read, is that even though we are twin sisters, we our bedrooms were right next to each other, we had the same friends, the same parents, our experience was so unique and it was so different. And what we were what we were, um, the, the highs and the lows that we were experiencing often were really out of sync with one another. And I know for myself, more so than Tegan, my sexuality was, uh, I, I was, I was experimenting and having relationships in secret. And I think that I experienced a little bit more drama than Tegan. So even writing the book, I sort of was like dropped back into that kind of landscape of of tortured teenage, you know, self. And <laughs> Tegan, I would read Tegan's And I was uh, I was like, we went to Green Day and it was so cool. <laughs> we saw this concert. <laughs> I kept writing Tegan being like, I don't understand. Like, where's the where's the sad stuff? 
Like what, 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 (laughs) this was your experience of high school. You know, it was, it was very, it was illuminating for both of us, I think. Okay. So let's, let's actually uh, go from that point, the illumination of it all. So you're twins and I imagine it might, must be challenging to show the world that you are two different people. And even now doing this interview, I'm thinking, well, why aren't they together in the same room, shoulder to shoulder, (laughs) wearing the same outfit with the same hair? This is what people think with twins, right? So, um, I'm wondering if there was a time when you were reading about your sister's story when you were shocked. I think we were really aware of each other's journey. Obviously, I knew Sarah was struggling with her sexuality. I knew she was uh, grappling with that and having a secret relationship. But then we were also teenagers, and we just because we were siblings and twins didn't mean that we were automatically on each other's side. You know, we terrorized each other. We would pound on each other's door. We fought for the phone. We you know, fought over clothes, we fought over friends. You know, reading the book, I was really moved by Sarah's um, firsthand internal story of what it was like to to go through all those things. Because again, you have the sense that it's happening, but we never sat down and talked about it. And I think that kind of blew people's minds, even people who are fans of our band. I think think they just imagined, yeah, Sarah and I still live together and share cats or something. And I'm like, that's for the later part of our lives. Right now, we're really exploring our own identities, you know, and living in our own places. So, yeah, I just, I think as teenagers, we were that those people too. We shared a lot, some of it verbal, some of it not. And, and, and then there were a lot of things we kept to ourselves, so. Probably a harsher uh, world, a less inclusive world uh, that you were growing up in in high school. And I'm wondering if there were certain role models that each of you looked up to um, as part of the LGBTQ plus community that helped inform your journey? You know, I, I, I'm always careful to, to point out that while it was a less hospitable time for queer people, um, it was the 90s and there was a lot happening in music and specifically the music and culture that we were a part of, uh, you know, going and seeing bands play, going to raves. There was a bit of a, Uh, like a do whatever you want, experiment, wear whatever you want, clothes, whatever. And there was a, I mean, I, this is probably a refrain people recognize from the nineties, but there was this mean people suck. Like there was this idea that like accepting people was actually really cool. So while the sort of like, while the, while the, while the legislation and the laws and the sort of cultural, like the older sort of institutions hadn't yet reflected the I, the openness to queer people. I think we were experiencing a sort of safe world, you know, within the music community. Um, however, there wasn't a lot of, there weren't a lot of queer people to look up to. I know that for myself, the people that I was seeing come out as um, a teenager, they were adults. They were like Melissa Etheridge and mm. Ellen DeGeneres. And like, to me, those, now I have such a deep respect for these people who, were braving these trails, but I was 15. Like, I wasn't like, oh, finally, I have someone to look up to. It was like, I was a teenager. I was like a total dirtbag. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted people that were my age to look up to, you know? And Which I wanted, we had, we had, you know? we had some of that because we love Nirvana and Kurt Cobain was so vocal about, you know, being pro gay. And, you know, we had Leisha Haley, who now is famous for being on the L word, but she was in a band called the Murmurs. And um, she famously dated Katie Lang. And I remember us holding on to those little nuggets, like being like, oh, there's this cool person that has pink hair. And, you know, Ani DeFranco, when she came out as bisexual and was on the cover of Spin. Listen, I'm happy you pointed out the nuance of the 90s because it was it was a special time and it was it might have been a little bit less inclusive, but we were going through that whole be who you be. And yeah, um, yeah like I remember that, too. There was a strong feeling of that <laughs> in the 90s. And it was kind of cool mm-hmm. that it, you know, it helped inform uh, you two to uh, create this incredible book that now so many other young people are going to be reading and seeing themselves reflected in, um, which I think is a beautiful full circle moment. So High School, a memoir by Tegan and Sarah, now out on paperback. I'm so excited that you could hang out with me today and thank you for your openness (laughs) um, and thank you for putting it all out there for all of us. We appreciate it.